Okay, I'm ridiculously excited because I get to introduce you to not only my daughter Alex, who we've been talking about wedding and finances, but you get to meet Bob, who really is the reason behind my book, Hungry for Home. He's incredible. He might be the most incredible man on the planet, but I'm excited to talk to him because these two did an, an amazing job last year of redoing Alex's first house. But it wasn't without a lot of different difficult times. And I think, you know, Bob and I have done many houses together and over time, we had to figure out how do you do it together? Um, one of the things, and before we get into their story, but we used to go sit at a bookstore and I would have a legal pad, he would have a legal pad. I would list out the things that were non-negotiable. I wanted them in a the house. He would list out his. And then that gave us room to really respect what each other wanted. And that really helped us in the process. So, but doing a house with a child is an entirely different ball game. And so tell me about when it started with y'all as far as even having worked on a house. Well, what's, what's great is that during the process of Ruth and I fixing up multiple homes, um, our kids were with us. Our kids were at our feet running around all the time. And you know, I think their first introduction to renovation was a day in which I had plans to lay subflooring in the kitchen and Ruth had to run an errand. So next thing I know, I have four little girls at my feet. <laughs> Um, and a bunch of subflooring. So I got four hammers and I just literally dumped out the box of nails on the floor and told the kids to have fun. Um, we were not the safest house in the neighborhood. Yes, right, uh, but that subfloor, that floor never squeaked. It was actually <laughs> amazing. So, yeah, but that's how, you know, you have to go with the flow uh, because not everything is always as planned. And that's the key to any renovation is well, you always run into roadblocks and you have to figure out how to improvise, adapt and overcome. Well, and we had also made an agreement that working on homes was not going to cost us our family in the process. So how do you do that? And for us, it was you needed to involve them in the process, whether it's tearing everything out of the house or laying hardwood floors. I mean, at one well, point, we did plenty of demoing. <laughs> plenty of demoing, and I think even at one point, in, in another house, you handed her a um, chainsaw. What was it? Where she had to cut a whole hole in the wall. Anyway, I'm fast forwarding to this story. Sawzall. 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 Yeah. Yes, I don't even know my words. So, talk to us about why did he even get involved in you doing this house? What happened? What was the process? You were getting married. You're not even married yet. You're you're engaged. Yeah. So I was engaged. Justin graduated college. Well. The only house I could afford is um, one that needed work. So <laughs> this is my work. parents' first house. Yes. But um, it only had, or it was like a four bedroom, two bathroom house, but like little bedrooms, little bathrooms. And I mean, it was definitely, it was built in the 1940s, definitely outdated. It needed a lot of help. <laughs> and, and I was like, oh yay, Chris and I, my husband, are gonna- Beyonce at the time. Yes. yes. Uh huh. Are gonna, just, we're gonna crush this. Cause like I had grown up around it. I had laid hardwood floors with my dad in some houses. Mm -hmm. I had painted, I had demoed. I was like, oh, this is gonna be a breeze. That wasn't, <laughs> just to say the least. Uh -huh. Well, and going into it, we really thought, like Chris and I were like, for the first probably two weeks, it was the two of us. Cause we were just doing the demo, demo and mm -hmm. ripping carpets out. And I mean, that was fun. And then we got to the end of those two weeks and we're like, this is tiring. And we haven't even really started. We've ripped out some carpets and we tried to tear down some wallpaper. So, And anyone who's ever done a house, that's the easy stuff. And we're like, oh my gosh, we made so much progress, but we're still so tired. And then little do we know, we had some six months longer to do. But, major. Um, so at what point did your dad get involved? Because at this point, he was still just giving you counsel mm -hmm. and what to do. Mm -hmm. But he didn't get involved yet. Yeah, I think my dad started getting involved when... And my mom Our, I, I tries to take that. credit for this, but <laughs> I'm going to take credit for this because it's my house. When we decided we wanted to move the kitchen from where the kitchen is into where the dining room used to be. Because, I mean... I can't do that by myself. I can try and tear down the kitchen, but who's, how am I supposed to know how to build all the cabinets and move the plumbing and all that kind of stuff. So I would say that that was around when that bring him in. But in addition, while I had grown around 
construction and moving and helping out in houses. Chris, my fiance at the time, he he's lived in the same house since he was born. Like he is a very, very hard worker, but he had never been around anything like that. And so for him, it was a totally new experience. And let's just say he was working really hard. We were working really hard on the house and we were exhausted. We were like, all right, well, like, <laughs> no offense, but like, we need some help. <laughs> well, not only that, if you've never done it, you don't have vision for what it's going to become. Mm -hmm. All you see is disaster surrounding you, mm -hmm. and you literally, when walls are down, and he was living in it. He was, he was living. living in oh the yeah, room. because they weren't married yet, so he's sleeping on the floor of one of the rooms, yes. and literally walls are down. They had cut holes in the walls, and he. I'll tell you when I think we knew we needed to bring your dad. Mm -hmm. He, Chris, and Alex were at my house. And Chris just had a glazed look on his face. And I said, sweetie, are, are you okay? And he said, no. And I realized that, first of all, we well, didn't want the pressure of what Bob and I had done to be mm -hmm. on you mm -hmm. and your new husband who mm -hmm. had never done anything. Yeah. Like that. And this was a time for Chris and I, and oh my goodness, it was a blessing from the Lord that we even had this time to figure this out before we were married. Yeah. But we had a time to really figure out, all right, I had some unsaid expectations that like, oh my gosh, I'm loving, gonna love this project. And Chris is gonna be exactly like my dad in knowing how to fix every single thing and knowing how to build every single thing. But that, those weren't his strengths and that's okay. And it was a time for him and I to figure out like, all right, Chris is good with the enthusiasm for the two of us, like, and doing the meticulous things we didn't wanna do. like pulling out hundreds of nails from the floor for where the carpet had been yeah. or scraping the stickiest wallpaper you've ever seen or cleaning up behind us like he really took on those things that we didn't want to do and honestly that was a blessing in and of itself and it is help what helped us finish but it, it almost I had to kind of take Adjust a, your a, adjustment of my expectations and figure out all right well then what what can Chris and I do with our love for real estate in the future? But it not necessarily looking like what my parents did. So at that point we kind of said, you know what? This is gonna be a project for you my and my dad, dad and I before I get married, for the two of us to just kind of get some father-daughter time for the summer before I get married. And of course Chris was there and but it was just it honestly turned into a blessing of a summer. It was a very hard summer. It was every night and every weekend just completely grinding it up read read it every single part of the house like adding walls adding two bathrooms when we had kitchen. to get ac into the house read it someone we had someone redo all our electricity like it was a big big project and i i would not take it back for anything because it was a time for me to get with my dad but it was also time for Chris and I to really figure out what our future is gonna look like. And we learned so much about each other in those six months that honestly, I feel like would have taken, it would have been harder to figure those things out with each other if we hadn't done that project. So it has saved us a lot of future headaches. <laughs> what was hard for you? And what was, what was uh, great? Well, what was, what was great is that I obviously went into the expectations that Alex and Chris would be tackling this project and I would be the uh, the the, uh, the cheerleader behind uh, the scenes behind the scenes giving them some wisdom no a little bit to the left no a little bit to the right you know measure twice cut once um, and then you know and then obviously as they described we learned uh, different characteristics of people and so the opportunity came for me to jump in um, I love that you used the word opportunity. It was. I know. Because I know. <laughs> it's something I love to do, and but I wasn't going to jump into this project because it was my daughter's mm -hmm. project with her future husband. Um, you know, so con I was, yeah, I was on the sidelines, but I was hoping that the coach would ask me to jump in. <laughs> so jumping into the project is, you know, is my love. Um, then to know that I'm doing it to launch my daughter and her future mm -hmm. and our future son-in-law into the future is something that just warms my heart even more. So through that process, you know, her and I, she learned a lot more than what she even learned all over those years of 
me doing the houses. And you which, learned a lot about Chris and how to oh, push him forward too. Absolutely. And just how to and encourage him. Correct. Because, you know, my son is 14 now, but he was not old enough during all those years of us renovating houses to kind of work with, um, work with somebody to figure out what their skill set is and how can you utilize them to best complement me. And so that in the beginning, it was, uh, you know, I'm so used to, and I grew up in a house where, you know, fixing things with hammers and whatever tools. And I'd say, hey, Chris, you know, can you go over there and screw that in? And he would look at me like, what am I supposed to do with that? <laughs> but that's because he didn't ever have those skills. Uh, so we, we, we took the advantage of those opportunities to learn some skills, but also figure out what his skills were mm -hmm. with regards to coming up alongside me, which one of my weaknesses is organization of my tools Clean or cleaning up. up afterwards when I'm done because I'm tired. And, and he was, long, and he was, he was there right after me, picking up right behind me all the time. And so it actually, his help allowed me to be even more efficient in doing the project. What was uh, your favorite thing that y'all did in the house? And then your least favorite? Well, I'll speak for Chris. His favorite thing in the whole house, this is so random, but it's the countertops. And what kind of countertops? <laughs> we, well, we got granite, honed granite, but when people it's, walk into our house, they think it's soap so and so. Which is what we have, <laughs> yes. Much more extensive. Yeah. So, um, my favorite part. And for people who don't know what honed granite is, honed granite is when they take the shine off of it. Mm -hmm. So it's a very matte finish. But it's more yeah. susceptible to. But that's the that's the look you're looking for. Stains and stuff, but hers is black, so it doesn't. Uh, yeah. It's not. Yeah, that's not going to happen. So. Um, my favorite part. Oh, that's really hard. Of working on the house, what, did, what was your favorite my favorite thing? part of working on the house was probably the kitchen mm -hmm. because building the cabinets. I mean, while it was frustrating when we had to install them and no floor is level and no wall is level, and we had to cut different parts to make it fit, um, getting to just kind of do something that I feel like I felt like oh, like I can actually do this on my own. He can leave me for a little bit. I can be the one gluing and anything. I just, and then you could, you could really just start to see things transform with adding cabinets and with just adding a sink, you know, it just kind of makes it more into a home. Um, and you will all be able to hopefully see some transition pictures because I was gonna say, that is a big thing. <laughs> one of the things um, I want you to do is come to my website at www.hungryforhome or Instagram at Hungry for Home, where we're going to have before and after photos and videos of all of the And you'll work. get to see us looking super cute yeah. in our work clothes getting all dirty. <laughs> Overalls. Um, and yeah, like to answer the question, my favorite part was we transformed a small bedroom on the second floor um, and not, or turned that into a master bath. And closet. Um, and, and a walk-in closet. So. That in itself was a challenge uh, by busting a hole through the wall to get to the plumbing. bedroom next door and then all the plumbing and showers and electricity. And so it was just a challenge and the final product is just awesome compared to what it was before. So. Mm -hmm. All right, so follow along. I can't wait to show you and you're gonna see what they've done. Thank Have you. Bye-bye.